Good morning, boys and girls. It is good to see you again this morning. I hope you've had a really great week. And we are going to continue with our talking about the people through the Bible. And we are in 2 Kings 15, 1 through 7, and 2 Chronicles 26. And both of these refer to King Uzziah. Now, last week we took a look at the life of King Jeroboam II of Israel. We found him to be a king, just as all the other kings before him in Israel, where he did evil in the sight of the Lord. We looked at the mercy that God had for Israel, despite how the king behaved and how the people behaved and how they committed sin after sin after sin. And they went, they were continually going to the false idols, false gods, instead of going to God. Today, like I said, we're going to be talking about Uzziah the king of Judah. Now, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. He ruled over Judah for 52 years, and he was the son of Amaziah. Now, uh, Uzziah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did great things for Judah. He went to war against the Philistines. He broke down walls that had been erected. He built towns around the city of Jer towers, excuse me, around the city of Jerusalem. These towers were used for defense, where the people could get inside and shoot arrows through small holes in there. He built machines that would aid them in these towers. He dug, he, he built towers out of the desert. He built many wells out of the desert. So they had plenty of water for all of the animals that they had to raise. He rebuilt cities that had fallen during past battles over other under other kings. He raised up a great military leader, well, many leaders, who led 307,500 men. That's the soldiers he had under their command. Uzziah provided every person in the army with shields, spears, helmets, coats of armor, bows and stones for their sling. He invented machines, I was telling you about a minute ago, used in the towers in Jerusalem. These machines aided the men in many different things, and one of them was throwing big rocks over the edge of the tower and the walls went onto their enemies. Uzziah became famous everywhere. Everybody knew his name, and everybody knew what a great king he was and what a great leader he was in the military. God greatly helped Uzziah to become very, very powerful. And understand that God helped him to become that way. But here we go again, down that same rabbit hole that so many kings before him have gone down. And now here is Uzziah chasing after things he shouldn't be chasing after. Uzziah became un faithful to the Lord. First, he entered the Lord's temple to burn incense. Now, this was a job that was just for the priests. The king had no business, no business going into the, into the temple, and he wasn't supposed to do this. Eighty plus priests confronted him, and Uzziah began to shout at them in the Lord's temple. While he was shouting, he suddenly was stricken with a terrible disease, leprosy. The chief priests and all the other priests saw the disease as it began, began on his forehead. So they hurried him out of the temple because now he's highly contagious and considered unclean. And nothing unclean should be allowed in the temple. Uzziah knew that the leprosy was from God and it was to make him suffer. He died alone in a separate house. He wasn't even allowed back in the palace. His son, Jotham, was now in charge of the palace, and he ruled as king. And like I said, he ended up dying alone in the palace. Well, not in the palace, in a separate house from the palace because of what he had done. He was not faithful to the Lord. He did not follow the rules that God had let down. Just like people today, success went to his head. It's kind of ironic that the success people seek 
including Uzziah, he sought that success. They, that same success can easily destroy us. The life of King Uzziah illustrates this greatly. He succeeded admirably, but his success led him to pride. His pride led him to sin. And in just a few moments, it nullified his pride and that sin nullified or got rid of, made it just go away all the years of accomplishments that he had. <laughs> Though he ruled for 52 years and had many outstanding achievements, he was remembered by this one sad little line in the Bible from Second Chronicles 26:23. He is a leper. Uzziah's life teaches us the dangers of success. The danger of success is pride. Success is great if it comes from the Lord and it is used for the Lord. We talked about all the great things that King Uzziah had done for Judah. And it is clear from verse 5 that his success was not by his effort alone, but it was from the Lord. God made him successful, and he continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had an understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. As long as he chased after God, God made sure he did great things, and he won great battles. The source of God's wisdom is his word. Boys and girls, we've talked about this week after week. God's word. God's word is God's wisdom. And he, it's written down for us to read, to understand, to go back to when we need meaning for things. Uzziah could have used his successes to point others to the greatness of God. So that's God's name could be exalted, not just his name, not just his, but God's name. Success is a great danger if we don't guard against pride. Someone once said that the human being is the only animal that you can pat on the back and his head will swell. Uzziah started believing everything that everyone was saying about him and his pride led to his fall. In the very short amount of time, he ruined a very prosperous lifetime as a successful king. What he did by entering that temple to burn incense was against the laws of Moses, and God had forbidden it. He had said this is not to happen. There's a difference between a king rules one way, a priest rules another way, and then there are those who, the uh, prophets, so the kings, prophets, and priests, all separate then. Now, there were some kings who were also prophets, but there's one who is all three together. And I bet you know who that is, Jesus Christ. He's a king. He's our king. He's a prophet. He knows everything. He tells us what God wants. And he is the highest priest. Like another man in the Bible with a similar name, Uzzah, from 2 Samuel 6, Uzzah was struck down for touching the Ark of the Covenant. They were told not to touch. So like Uzziah, we have Uzzah, who did not do what they were told, or did what they were told not to do, and they were both struck down. Uzziah presumed on the holiness of God, taking it upon himself, a task that required holiness. Uzziah was rendered unclean for the rest of his life with leprosy. Pride is at the heart of all sin. Satan's original sin was pride. It led him to think he was equal to God. And he dangled that same temptation before Eve. If you eat of this fruit, you will be like God from Genesis 3, 5. Ever since the human race fell into sin, all sin at its core consists of the arrogance of saying, I know better than God. 
and I know better than God and his ways, and I don't need to submit to his authority. That is the base of all sin, thinking we know more than God knows, and we don't need to listen to him. But scripture is clear. Pride goes before destruction, but gives grace to the humble. That's from 1 Peter 5.5. 5. If we want to avoid being opposed by God, and if we want his grace in our lives, we must judge every proud thought and grow in humbleness. We are not, we are all equal to one another. God is our authority. We are not equal to God. God is the ultimate authority with Jesus Christ. We are to give all recognition to God for our accomplishments because without him, we can do nothing. Remember, his wisdom is in his word. To know what God wants of us, to know what his rules are, the rule breakers, the things that he doesn't want us to do, we must read his word. Boys and girls, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to study your word. Lord, we are thankful that there are ways and there are people that you have placed in our lives that can help explain your word. Lord, we are thankful most of all for your son, Jesus Christ. And may everything we do be glorifying to you. In Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great 4th of July. Have a wonderful week. I want you to know how much I miss you and I love you. Goodbye.